Are you cruising for the first time? I'm going to go through 15 cruise mistakes that you absolutely want to avoid because they have the potential to actually ruin your vacation. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, I am going to be talking about the rookie cruise mistakes that are unfortunately often made by beginner cruisers. And sometimes these mistakes will actually, well, cost you money or make your cruise more stressful or even worse, ruin your vacation. Yes, that is actually possible. I hate to be overly dramatic, but it can happen. So I'm going to be going through these 15 things that are going to be helpful, things that you want to avoid, and I'm going to also share some beginner cruise tips. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. So the very first mistake to avoid is to avoid picking the wrong cruise ship or cruise line. Now, I'm actually convinced that when a first time cruiser does not like cruising, chances are it is because they chose the wrong cruise ship and cruise line for them. So how do you pick the right cruise line? How do you pick the right cruise ship? Well, you do have to kind of figure out what you want from the vacation because not all cruise ships are the same, just like not all resorts are the same. Now, I think a mistake that sometimes people make in choosing the wrong cruise ship is they might book based on price. Now, I'm not saying that you should choose the most expensive cruise or even the cheapest cruise, but I think price has to go out of it, at least at the very beginning. You do want to choose a cruise ship that gives you the experience that you want. So if you're somebody who really wants to be active, you want to make sure that you're not like bored on vacation. Well, then you'll want to choose a cruise line that or a cruise ship that has actually a lot of activities on board and maybe some things like water slides or zip lines or a lot of things to do, a lot of very active shows because you know that is the type of vacation that you want. But likewise, if you are somebody who really wants to relax on this particular cruise, you want some downtime, you want to chill by the pool, you don't want noise, you don't want kids around, well then you won't want that. You won't want a ship with water slides, you won't want a ship full of children at March break. So those are the kind of things that I mean. And I will add an extra tip. Even if you love the cruise line, for instance, if you love Royal Caribbean as an example, you may not love the experience on one of their smaller, older ships. Now you might like it, but if you want that experience where you have an aqua theater show and you have different neighborhoods um, going on and you have an ice skating show, well, you're not gonna have that on some of the smaller, older ships. So I'm not saying it to discourage you, I'm just saying that you really do have to watch the cruise ship and not just the cruise line. Now, a little tip is that you could talk with a travel agent. You could, of course, look at reviews on Cruise Critic and on different websites. You could look at blogs. You could watch YouTube videos like this, but all of that will help you to choose the very best ship and cruise line for you. Mistake number two is either underpacking or overpacking. And this is really common, both of them, for first time cruisers. Now, a lot of times new cruisers are told don't overpack. So sometimes they make the mistake of underpacking and just not bringing all of the different things they need. So a good thing to do is have a packing checklist so you do have everything you need. That includes clothing, but that also includes all of your toiletries. Um, that includes things for shore excursions, shoes. Sometimes people don't bring things like closed toed shoes. And to do some of those activities on the ship, you actually need them. So you definitely wanna have a good packing list. I'll leave some resources of some packing lists in the description below if you are interested. And the other mistake is overpacking. I have to say, even though I've been on over 20 cruises, I am still guilty of overpacking. I am an overpacker. If you are an overpacker, let me know in the comments below. Mistake number three, not putting your phone in airplane mode. Oh my gosh. While this doesn't happen to every new cruiser, thank goodness, when it does, it is a very expensive mistake. So even if you get the cruise ship Wi-Fi, make sure to put your phone in airplane mode before your cruise ship sails away. Mistake number four. Now, I really don't think this one is talked about enough at all. This has to do with if you're going on a cruise with other people, maybe you're going on a cruise with some family or some friends and it's your first cruise. The mistake is not talking about what everybody's expectations are before the cruise. So if it's your first cruise, maybe you're thinking that you'll have your own alone time and that's going to be great. 
but the other people on the cruise are thinking that you guys will wake up at the same time, go for breakfast at the same time, hang out at the pool together, do every activity together, and maybe by day two or day three, you'll be going crazy. Or the opposite, maybe if it's your first cruise and you're thinking that you guys will be doing everything together. And other people that are more seasoned cruisers know that on a cruise ship, everybody can have the vacation they want and just meet up at dinner or for certain activities. So those are things just to discuss before your cruise so that you're all on the same page. Number five, getting overly stressed out about what to wear on a cruise, what to wear on formal night and cruise line dress codes. Now in reality, most popular cruise lines now have actually decreased a lot of their formality in their dress codes. So already you don't have to worry about that. And like we talked about, in the first mistake, you wanna pick the right cruise line for the type of vacation you want. So if you do want something more formal, then you'll wanna go with a cruise line like Cunard, which is definitely very formal and very traditional. And if you want to go with a cruise line that is super casual, that you really can wear anything you want without any dress code, there is still a little bit of decorum, by the way, uh, that would be Norwegian Cruise Line that has freestyle cruising. But the rest of the popular cruise lines or the mainstream cruise lines are pretty much all within the range, falling somewhere in the middle. Now, sometimes I know new cruisers worry about what to wear on formal night and think they don't really want to get dressed up, so they'll head to the buffet or stay out of the main dining room because they worry that maybe they're not dressed up enough. So you don't really have to worry about that. Honestly, most people are less concerned about what you're wearing and they're really just there to have a good time on their own cruise, take their own pictures, and they're really not looking at you at all. Number six, not booking your cruise in your legal name. Now this sometimes happens when other people book your cruise for you, or maybe you're online on a website and you wanna find out the price so you put your name in kind of quickly and you don't put your full legal name and then you book it and you don't realize it it actually is a very big problem and it will get you denied boarding. So it will absolutely ruin your cruise if you do this. So make sure that you do book your cruise with your proper legal name. And if the cruise line asks you for your middle name, make sure you give that to them too. Now, if you do make the mistake early on in the booking, just make sure that you do give them a call or give your travel agent a call. Most of the time, there won't be a fee for making a small mistake if it's caught early. However, sometimes there can be a name change fee for this. So definitely something to watch out for. Number seven, booking your flight the same day as your cruise. Now I know if you've watched other videos about the same topic, you have heard this before. This is because it is one of the most important things that you could do is to fly in the day prior to your cruise. Truthfully, every cruise, I am sure there are people that miss their cruise simply because their flight didn't arrive on time. They didn't get to the cruise port on time. Something happened. So anything can happen. You can hit a winter storm and your flight can be delayed. There can be a strike. There can be mechanical problems on your plane. There could be a myriad of reasons why your flight doesn't get you to your cruise on time. But besides that, if you fly in the day of your cruise, I can guarantee you that you will be tired, that you will be stressed. It will give you peace of mind if you fly in the day before, get a hotel if you want near the airport, or even better, if you have the time, get a hotel where you can actually explore the destination, the cruise port before your cruise. You're going to start off your cruise in the best way possible and enjoy every minute from boarding time. Number eight, not getting travel insurance. Now this can happen to anybody. You don't need to be a new cruiser to make this mistake. The reality is that we never think that we need travel insurance until we need travel insurance. So something can happen. You don't plan to cancel, but maybe something happens, God forbid, to a family member and you need to cancel your cruise. You don't want to lose out on thousands of dollars. Better to have been insured. Now, something else can happen is that you could be on a beach maybe in Mexico or anywhere and God forbid somebody in your family breaks their leg, they need to go to the hospital, maybe they need emergency surgery. I hate thinking about all these things, but things can happen and it can cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, especially when we're looking into medical situations. And you just wanna make sure that you are covered. It is a big mistake to not have travel insurance, so please make sure that you do have that. Number nine, not bringing cash or small bills with you on your cruise. Now we often hear that on cruises, we don't need to bring any money with us. Well, it's not 100% true because small bills are really handy. Now from the moment you arrive at your cruise terminal and the porters actually take your bags and bring them to the cruise ship, well, 
usually it is customary to leave them a small tip. So a few dollars per bag. So have some small bills handy right away with you. At the same time, once you're on the ship, you may want to leave some extra cash for some very special crew members that have gone above and beyond. Even if you prepay your gratuities or even if you pay your gratuities on your credit card, having a few extra dollars for that is handy. In the cruise ports, if you go to a straw market, for instance, you probably want to bargain a little bit. And if it's a small item like a $4 t-shirt or a $10 item, sometimes having small bills is really handy. Number 10, not looking at the cruise planner and not knowing about all of the different activities that are available on the cruise ship. There are so many things to do, but if you don't look at your cruise planner, whether it's on paper or on your app, well, there's a good chance that you're gonna miss out on a lot of them and maybe you'll only find out about them by the end of your cruise. You also wanna explore the entire cruise ship. Many cruise ships are like, well, they're like resorts and they have so many different things on so many of the different decks from the top decks to the lower decks. And you definitely want to see all that is out there so that you can participate in as much or as little as you want. Number 11, not knowing what is included and not included on your cruise. So the things that are not included on a cruise that often do surprise new cruisers are things like gratuities. And this can really add up because it's about on average $15 US per person per day that will sort of be automatically charged onto your account once you're on the cruise if you haven't prepaid it. So that's something you definitely wanna know. Other things that are not included on most cruise lines, soft drinks aren't included. So even if let's say iced tea and lemonade are included, soft drinks are not. You'd have to buy a beverage package for that. And excursions. When you get off on your cruise ship, most of the time, you're not gonna have a beach right next door. And to get to any of the different activities, you'll have to either book an excursion or you'll have to take transportation, including maybe a private tour or a taxi to a local attraction. So you have to know that these things aren't included. Number 12, not knowing what is included. We talk so much about the extras that we can add on to our cruise from spa packages to specialty restaurants that sometimes we don't know about all of the things that are actually included and are free on your cruise. So there are a lot of things that includes fitness classes because some of them are actually an extra charge, but there are quite a lot of really good free ones, including a cardio kickboxing class that I did on Celebrity that was awesome. On some cruise ships, room service is included and it's really good. So why not take advantage of ordering something special? And the casual restaurants, oftentimes if a restaurant looks really good, well, sometimes we think that it's not included. This is really common on some of the princess cruise ships that have Alfredo's. That restaurant is so good. And many times people don't even realize that it's included. It is really good. So definitely check it out. Number 13, know your cruise lingo. Now I know this is going to sound funny. And when I tell my non-cruiser friends about cruise lingo, well, they almost don't even believe me, but there are things that you wanna know before your cruise. First thing is do not call the cruise ship a boat. Really all of the avid cruisers and even the captain or any of the officers or any of the crew are going to look at you sideways if you call the cruise ship a boat. So definitely don't do that. But you'll also want to know things like port and starboard because your cabin or the different areas of the ship will often be referred to by port and starboard side of the cruise ship. Aft and forward, you'll want to know that as well. And you'll want to know that your cabin attendant or cabin steward is called the cabin steward and not a cabin steward. Now I have a blog post all about 85 different cruise terms, terminology, and lingo that you need to know for your cruise. And I will leave it in the description if you'd like to check that out before your cruise. Number 14, over planning. Now I have to say, I have a tendency to get a little bit like this because I get so excited before my cruise that I look up everything that I can. And I think about all of the different activities that we're gonna do and restaurants we're gonna try and drinks we're gonna have that I, I have a tendency to over plan sometimes, which I have learned from. I've learned from when I took a cruise on the Oasis of the Seas several years ago, and I had overplanned so much that I was tired at the end of the vacation. It was honestly a great ship. The entertainment's phenomenal. Everything was amazing, but it wasn't my favorite cruise because I was exhausted after that cruise trying to do it all. So definitely try to balance out what you do and what you say, you know what, 
we can go on that cruise ship or that cruise itinerary even another time and I can do the other things I want to do then. Number 15. Now this has to do with disembarkation and if you've ever noticed nobody likes to talk about the end of the cruise so we don't really talk about disembarkation very often but a mistake is booking a flight too early on disembarkation day. Now when your cruise ship will actually arrive in port at the end of the cruise on the itinerary sometimes it says something like 6 a.m or 7 a.m well by the time customs actually clears the entire ship it can be closer to eight nine o'clock or sometimes even later sometimes a little bit earlier but you really never know but it really does take time before you can get off the ship and before two three four five thousand other people can get off the ship so don't book your flight too early on the last day of your cruise. Now, a little tip for you is, if you're not sure what time you should book your flight at the end of your cruise, you can either ask your travel agent or have them do it. They will know the appropriate time, but otherwise you can call the cruise line and you can just ask them what time is suggested for a flight um, at the end of the cruise. And they'll let you know like after noon or after one o'clock, and then you'll be able to have a good idea of when you should book your flight home. Now I'm gonna leave a video here all about the 15 things that you'll wanna do immediately as soon as possible as you board your cruise ship between boarding and sail away to make sure that your cruise starts off right. Now I'd love to hear from you if this is your first cruise or how many cruises you have done, any of your tips that you have, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Now, if you did like this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now. Happy cruising.